Yo, what up, though? Top of the morning. Back at it. Episode eight or nine or something. Yeah. Ocho. Back Ocho eight. Okay. Okay. Ocho nueve. I don't know. Eight, nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, Spanish now. How y'all boys feeling? One to ten. Who we starting with today? Oh, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, he got. Uh, well, like this Jordan boy, you looking? Uh, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, nothing holding me back, so I'd say a ten, man. Nothing's holding me back. Nothing's like nothing crazy's happening. You know, what I'm saying like, oh, these cool things are happening. It's just life, but nothing's holding me back. So it's ten out of ten. Let's start. Let's see where I'm at. Uh, well, I was like a four earlier, bro. I had a like <laughs> massive headache. So oh, I was down bad. Crazy, where I was gonna go to our homecoming game, but I drove up there. Uh, so you drove all the way there? Nah, we had a business meeting earlier, okay, okay. Uh, up there. So I was talking to some uh, professionals and faculty. It's a fantastic experience. But afterwards, I'm like, it started to rain and it was cold out there, bro. I'm like, this is pneumonia weather. Let me get myself back to the crib, bro. So I drove yeah. back, took some medicine, crashed. Uh, now I feel better. I'm about to eight now. I feel like I'm eight now. So. What's holding you back, though? Or the headache. Okay, oh, the headache. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll probably say a nine. Probably the only pitfall is probably just the weather. So I just left our homecoming game and it was like very cold. And I just went out there with just a hoodie. So I had to go back and get my coat. Because I'm not playing no games. <laughs> <That's weather. laughs> he bit me sick next I'm, week. I'm fresh off sickness, bro. I can't go back to bed. Mama ain't raised no fool, bro. Ain't about to be not no the clean version. This way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ain't raised no fool. <laughs> uh, what's up, bro? Nine plus eight plus ten. About 29. Uh, yeah, no, no, 27. 27. 27. 27. 27. Anyways, anyways, bro, don't make hey, don't fact check me, dog. <laughs> 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 Imagine that because we sound dumb. <laughs> hey, was nine plus ten, was that like 29? <laughs> oh man, we got a great topic it's today, facts. man. I mean, you guys have been supporting us really well, so I'm excited to see how you guys enjoy this episode. Um, man, you know, we're talking about habits, right, and creating some good habits that we all can use to help us in the future, to help us right now, um, and just to grow further as people, man, and as individuals. And um, I want to start with you, Slater, man. You know, what are some of those habits and what is, how have the habits have gotten you to where you are today uh, compared to maybe some bad habits that you've had in the past? Yeah. I got to, right? Oh, so what I love about habits is they kind of shape who we are. You know what I'm saying? And so there are good habits and bad habits. I'm trying to have a higher amount of good habits than I do bad habits. Um, a habit I really enjoy that all of us have personally is our habit to be in God's word. You know what I'm saying? And that habit shapes who we are. You know what I'm saying? Because habits shape who you are. Uh, a bad habit that I have is I love Chipotle, man. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A, man. Those are some <laughs> bad habits that I have, but. Um, as I've gotten older, I really started to um, to appreciate habits to a higher extent. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really interested to hear y'all habits and see what's happening, see what habits all of us can share. You know what I'm saying? And what habits that we have that should probably be not habits we should lose. You know? Some good stuff. That's some good stuff. I think about to your point, um, just building habits mm -hmm. and, and the things that you have right now. And you said like God's word. Incorporating that habit in my life has changed my life, right? Whereas in the past, I mean, I've had a lot of bad habits where I was chasing money, where I was chasing acceptance, validation, like you name it. Like there were so many bad habits that led to just corruption of my character. Mm. But adding God's value of his word in my life and, and making a, a consistent, making it a consistent habit has really like flipped my world upside down. And all credit goes to God. So I got to give him the glory because you know, his word is a double-edged sword that helped me yeah. grow. And it convicted me when I need to be convicted me, encouraged me when I need to be encouraged. And so I'm thankful for that. But also, I mean, you know, when I think of habits, I think of something along the lines of it's it's an obstacle that you have to get away out of your own eyes, right? Because sometimes it can be a good habit, but also it can be on the flip side, a bad habit, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so and pertains to God's word. There are times where I don't read it as consistently as I should. Right. And that's a bad habit of me, like, ah, uh, you know, putting it on the back end, like, oh, maybe I'm committed to so many different responsibilities, and by the end of the night, I don't feel like reading it the way that I should read it, right? right. So that's a bad habit that, that can form from me just maybe procrastinating or me not prioritizing said things. So I'm curious, 
from your your approach and your perspective, what that's looked like for you? Man, uh, habits. I kind of when I think about habits, um, something that I've actually learned is habits is like what do you what you lean on, you know, when it times get rough, you know. And so, you know, whether that's good or bad, and like, you know, me and one of my good friends, we always talk about, like, you know, when something's not going the way you want it to, like, what's the first thing you run into? Mm-hmm. And that's that will show you, like, what your habits are. Um, so for me, as I've grown older, it's been more like, okay, I'm gonna run to God instead of, you know, running to outlandish activity, you know? So when I think of habits, it's kind of like the foundation and it's just like, kind of just like the brickwork, you know, that you have had in place that you've continued to Work on, work on, and work on. So, yeah. it's the brick work. <laughs> that's a clear. So, yeah, um, yeah. That's what I kind of think about habits. It's kind of like you know, just the backbone and everything. So, yeah, bro. We the brick work laying the foundation, man. I like how you said. I'm sorry, could you? I like how you said um, that a habit is the thing that you go to as you're in a situation or facing um, adversity or something. A habit. That's that's the thing that you're going to and you said personally you're going to God I would say that's a positive habit yeah, you know what I'm saying sure. yeah and it's like like you said like what are you running to like that can be a good thing or a bad thing you know and so it's yeah. kind of like picking and choosing like you know which one is it really and like is it beneficial to my life does it produce fruit like those are questions we have to ask ourselves you know especially about our habits too so kind of identifying what's a good and bad habit in our life for sure in the context of what you use it reminded me of like idolatry right and how our habits can actually be idols mm-hmm. you say like what to run to in adverse times yeah. is what you serve or yeah. essentially is what's your your lord yeah and so something that Micah spoke on last night is that you know if you can't go one day without it it's probably an idol mm-hmm. it's probably a bad habit that you have right and so some instances he was talking about social media some yeah. instances he was talking about relationships some instances he was talking about like money like if you can't go without chasing these things every single day then it's probably a habit and mm-hmm. you know with bad habits we have to like remove them outside our lives because they don't produce fruit right. I mean, to your point they don't produce fruit and now you know if we have multiple multiple habits stacked bad habits stacked on top of each other man we're gonna live life with molded fruit we're gonna live life with spoiled fruit not good for anything, right? right? And then it starts to infect other areas, other avenues of our life that we probably don't actually want to be affected. But if we can cut off the bad fruit, if we can cut off the weed, then it doesn't spread to other areas of our lives. That's real. I want to ask y'all a question too, though. Like, okay, so let's put in the scenario. Okay, so say somebody mm. is trying to change their lifestyle, right? They're, they're, you know, they've been living, you know, what we like to call worldly or whatever. Question. And so now they want to have, you know, a change, <laughs> change lifestyle. They want to live cleaner. They want to have cleaner habits. So the question I want to ask y'all is like, how do they pluck up the bad habits and shift them, shift to good habits or turn to good habits? What would you guys say? I was, uh, I was always told to get a habit out. You got, but you got have a habit in. You know what I'm saying? So habits have to exchange mm. um i've never been a smoker personally but if you're but if you're getting out that habit of smoking you, you have to bring in a different habit to put instead of that mm. you know what i'm saying mm. um so i think that the first thing also is to admit this is a habit mm. you know what i'm saying if you don't admit it, 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 uh, that this thing's a problem then how can you fix the the uh, the, the problem yeah. so first say yo i've got a problem boom me i've got a problem now learn how can I get out of that problem, but how can I bring in a good way of fixing said that problem? Like me personally, I've got a problem. I have a habit of going on socials way too much, bro. On Instagram, I'm on way too much. So I've so I've even got a time limit thing on it because I knew this is a problem. Hey, me, I've got a problem. Here's how I can fix it. Now what I'm trying to do now is learn what can I do instead of every time that I'm up on the phone saying, let me go on Instagram. What's something I can do it, do instead? So that's what I'm trying to, try to learn now. But to have a habit lost, you've got to get, gain a habit in. That's good, bro. That's good. Um, man, that's a good question. How do we pluck out bad habits? Uh, I just want to say that Bible verse, man, bad company corrupts good character, Factual, good moral. Right? So, you know, most of our habits stem from the people that we surround ourselves with, right? So if we're around people with bad habits, what habits do you think we're going to have? Exactly. We're going to have some bad habits, right? So the habits, the way that I've changed the habits in my lifestyle, I started surrounding my, myself with people 
who are adding good habits to their lives or who have already had good habits implemented into their lives. So the cool thing about that is that once I realized that I wanted to be like people who had good habits, now these bad habits started to slowly but surely started to plug out my life. God started to prove me like, hey, you probably can't do this. And also the people in those groups that I started to, to engross myself with, they started to hold me accountable. Like, hey, like, hey man, you can't be doing this, bro. Right. You can't right. be doing this, man. You can't be doing things that aren't gonna help you grow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you pluck out bad habits in your life? I would say you, it starts with the people that are surround yourself with, like right? a level of accountability, having people that want to help you grow. And also like, it takes you to acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge one, it's a problem. Like I shouldn't be doing this. And then also confessing that to people around you so that they can help you and hold you accountable to grow forward. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to hit on both of y'all points because y'all said some good stuff. And um, something that Slater said it was like, something that he taught me actually was like, you know, you can always acknowledge it, but if you're not going to change it, then it doesn't mean anything. You know what I'm saying? And so that's something I really like that you said. But what you said too is like, which kind of took the words right out of my mouth, is kind of like the people too, but like also the environment as well, the environments that we place ourselves in. And so, you know, we what we tend to do is like when we have bad habits, we try to, we see red flags, but we try to make it into yellow lights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's Bye. what we try to do. That's bro. Patreon content. Literally. Patreon and so, content. And so then <laughs> you try to turn yellow lights and you try to turn it into green lights, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something that we do, you know, when we have a bad habit in our life, but at the same time, when we don't acknowledge it and we're not confessing it to somebody else because we yeah. know if we tell that to somebody else, they're going to be like, bro, like, that's a red light, red flag. Like, yeah, you need bro. to stop that. And so we kind of keep that under wraps. But like, I really think like the environment plays a role, you know, as much as with the people as well, too, because we interact with people every day, but we're also in environments with these people every single day, too. So. Yo, but I'll talk about his point, because he said something, uh, how habits affect other things up our lives, you know what I'm saying? So just because I have a habit for social media, now what other things is that affecting uh, um, my life? It's affecting who, who, who I'm talking to, what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. how late I'm staying up, right. uh, my, my, my homework, I'm trying to do homework, my mom's to me because that's a habit. So the habits that we have affect other areas of our lives and that's why I just find fascinating, you know what I'm saying? Because now it's not just, oh, I've got this problem, but now this problem is causing other problems. And so now if you cut it, I think you said cut it at the, uh, the um, uh, stem, the whole trees come down in all its branches because you're cutting it at stem. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good. Uh, the analogy that you use with the stoplights really just spoke mm. to me, man, because like you talked about, we turn bad habits into like yellow lights, right? Red flags into Facts. yellow lights. You know, sometimes people in this world, either they slow down and they stop yeah. or they blow through it. Mm. They ain't blow through it. You're not supposed to do that. You know what I mean? Right? Mm. So you go through a yellow light. <laughs> I'm being a hypocrite right now because I be blowing through them no, sometimes, bro. But through them yellow lights, bro, it's a warning. Like, it's a warning. Like, hey, you, you probably shouldn't go because of the potential danger that can arise, man. Mm -hmm. So a habit is another way of allowing you to know, like, hey, you probably shouldn't keep doing this because of the potential danger that can come from this thing. Thanks. But we have to look and acknowledge, hey, this, this is a red light. Oh, it's starting to blink. I got to yield, man. Yeah. Or maybe it's a yellow light, man. I got to slow down and stop what I'm doing because of the potential dangers that can really arise from this situation, man. And so when we pluck it out at the stem, man, it, it doesn't allow us to fall into positions that we shouldn't have ever fall into, right? So we got to be mindful. We got to be cognizant of what are our habits, right? How do I remove these habits? And how can I let people know what I'm struggling with so that they can help me grow? Because at the end of the day, man, it takes 21 days to build a habit, either a good one or a bad one, right? Nice. So either you are going to continue to grow that habit or you're going to starve that habit and allow it to die. Yeah, bro. Sheesh. Bro, that's huge, bro. Huge, bro. Like, <laughs> that junk is just wild, too. And, like, even in, like, Slater's example, when he was talking about the social media and, you know, like, it, caught, it affects, you know, other things around us in our life, right? He just, like, said, like, staying up late, right? And so the thing about it is that we justify it. We justify mm. it. Oh, man, you know, I can, I can stay up a little late. Like, that's the things that bad habits do in our life is that it causes us to shift the way our routine or maybe our healthy routine or yeah. anything else that's stable. It causes us to shift things around mm. for it to, you know, create more space and for us to spend more time on that. But that's also, you know, on our part because we justify, you know, these bad habits. We make room for these bad habits. A couple of episodes ago, we talked about your priorities. The priorities and the habits coincide with each other. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of like, yo, like, what are your habits and what are your what are your priorities? 
But when you have bad habits, it causes you to bump out the good priorities that you have. Dude, that is fire, bro. Oh On point. Got to pay him for it. Because <laughs> now it, it reminds me of what, what you said earlier, too, but like that discipline. Like you set an apt limit on those apps. I had yeah. to. Because of what it was doing in your life. Sometimes we, not sometimes, all of the time, we have to inflict discipline on ourselves so that these mm-hmm. bad habits don't continue to grow. At the end of the day, we all have bad habits of some sort. Yeah, Whether we sure. want to acknowledge it or not, there's a bad habit in your life and you have to choose to admit that or not. Mm-hmm. But what you can do is discipline yourself so that that those bad habits don't start to grow. Now you don't have one or two or three or four or five. Like you only maybe have one or maybe you cut it out entirely. Mm-hmm. But that only stems or that only happens if you have discipline. That only occurs when you take a level of accountability that happens from you and your friends to challenge you to grow past that bad habit, cut it out so that you can start producing some good fruit, man. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like we want to grow, but the only way we can grow is to discipline ourselves, right? That verse in Hebrews 12, 6 says, the Lord disciplines the ones that he loves, man. It's so nice. God puts us in positions where we are disciplined so that we can learn so that we don't continue to build bad habits, right? So, hey, maybe you are a person that suffers from a multitude of bad habits and maybe there's a hard for, it's hard for you to change, right? right. Well, guess what? God's going to help you, man. At the end of the day, God wants to help you and he's going to put you in some situations that are going to be perceivably hard, man. You have to come, come to a mirror moment where you're like, ah, man. Dang, I gotta, I gotta fix this. And now it's like because of that discipline, because of that moment, you realize, okay, this is the direction that I need to go in. Now maybe I need to consult with my guys, or maybe I need to consult with my wise counsel to help me grow from this bad habit. But it all starts with discipline. One, bring it to God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another, bring it to wise counsel. And two, start. You yeah. gotta cut it out. You gotta cut it out, man. You yeah. gotta cut it out. Something that I like that you said is like, you know, God will put you in tough situations. And like he'll he'll put you in tough situations to show you what your habits are, hey, fact. to show you what your priorities are. So therefore, we get to see the real you. Like everybody is, you know, everybody's good at the top, at the mountaintop. But when it gets to that valley, that's where it really shows like what your habits are, what are your priorities. You know what I'm saying? And like um, it also says in a word too, like confess your sins, therefore, to one another, so you can be healed. And so when we talk about, you know, acknowledging like, hey, this is a bad habit in my life. Acknowledging is cool. Good. Now confess it to others so you can be healed from that. And so you can get help and people can see it on the outside lens instead of you seeing it just for yourself and justifying everything that you do. Because if we're being 100, we have like so much pride that we see ourselves as we're just fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. We just we're just perfect. (laughs) But when we talk to other people, and we get really get to pick their brains and they're actually being vulnerable and they confess like what's been going on there right? in their life then we're actually like dang like i'm actually a horrible person you know what i'm saying so i think like confessing to each other is key but at the same time it's like who are you hanging around you know i said every episode every episode who are you hanging around man but uh i was thinking here how you can't help me on my problem unless i tell you it's a problem so a lot of people are wanting help in different things but they're not telling someone that they have a problem i feel like because i've been here too but i'm i'm here chilling like oh i hope that he asked me about my addiction to social media so i can tell him about it bro what why don't (laughs) why don't i tell him about it so he can help me you know what i'm saying because he can't help me until i tell him about it something else that i process is is um since i have two very best friends to help them help me best i've got to be open and honest mm. otherwise you all can't help me you know what i'm saying and i can't help you unless you're honest and so it's honestly this acknowledgement helps us get a tighter bond and it fixes said 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 problem you know right. what i'm saying and to to your point because what i see in that illustration that you just gave is that when we're open with others it, it helps us and it helps other people grow as well yeah the cool thing about that is that once i tell you what i'm struggling with you're going to hold me accountable what, you, what did you send me last night, bro? How can I be holding you accountable? Bro? After I confess my struggles to you. Mm-hmm. And now you are constantly aware of the things that I'm struggling with. And throughout the week, you can say, hey, bro, how you feeling in this area? How are you doing mm-hmm. in this area? How, how is this area going for you? And if I'm struggling, like, you can encourage me, right? Hey, man, you got to do this. You got to do that. But I, that doesn't happen if I'm not vulnerable, if I'm not open, if I'm not transparent with you guys that hold me accountable, man. So we need accountability. And another thing that I just came to my mind as you were talking, bro, was like, you remember we used to have those conversations during Devos about, like, that preparation phase. How God puts us through certain situations so that to develop our character for future times down the line. Yeah. So I started to think about, man, how many situations am I in right now 
that are going to directly impact the way that I handle things in the future. Mm -hmm. I thought about that. I'm like, oh, man, that's that's pretty pretty much every situation I'm in is going to have a direct impact on how I carry myself in the future. Mm -hmm. So if I'm being a poor steward of stuff right now, well, guess what I'm going to be later on? A poor steward. Right. <laughs> if I have growing like greater responsibility, maybe I got the wife, maybe I got a family, right? And my, I'm a poor steward right now. I'm gonna be a poor steward leading a family, bro, and that's not gonna produce any good fruit. How am I gonna lead a wife? How am I gonna lead a family if I can't be disciplined? If I can't control myself, right? Really? If I can't lead properly, right? So we have to acknowledge these things so that one, they don't cripple us right now, but also cripple future people that we probably don't even know yet, or people yeah. that we do know yet. Right. We gotta understand like. Our situations right now don't just affect us in the present. They affect us in the future. Mm-hmm. We have to be mindful, cognizant of cutting out the bad habits so that bad habits don't enter future relationships, future opportunities, future careers, whatever the case may be, man. Yeah. And something I was going to say about that is the longer this thing's a habit, the worse it gets. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we start going, uh, driving on the yellow light. But then we keep doing yells. It's like, oh, it's only been, been red for a second, so I can go. <laughs> And it's like, well, it's only been red for a couple. And then all of a sudden, but we're going. It's, it's, it's been red for 10 seconds. Then we get T-boned. And then we're mad. Oh, it's like, bro, if you had broken the damn thing and just stopped on yellow at the signs were yellow, you would never be going at the signs red, bro. Mm. And I think it's, it's the thought of stopping it while it's still yellow, before it gets red, before you get hit. You know what I'm saying? It's me. I've got this problem. Here's some boom. Yeah. They can help you. Yeah. I think, like, we should like to 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 provide a good habit is make it a habit to be vulnerable with those who are closest around you. Mm-hmm. And so, but most importantly, you know, be vulnerable with God too. Yeah. Because as we're talking about, you know, confessing to one another, like closed mouths don't get fed. Like literally, I can't we don't have the ability to read people's minds. So if we, we can read emotions, we can read body language. But when it comes to somebody somebody can have a great poker face and we might not know what's going on right. inside, right? And so if they don't say anything, how am I going to be able to help you? But it's the, also the same way with God, right? Even though he's knowing that he's all powerful and he knows what's going on inside, but he wants us to come to him with everything we have and just like, you know, trust him that he had, he knows our we're vulnerable with him and that he can, you know, handle the situation. So it's kind of like, okay, I should be practicing that with God first. Then I can go practice it with others who are closest around me too. I think of the verse, uh, I cast our cares on God because he cares for us. He yeah. tells us to bring our anxieties to him, bring our stresses, bring everything to him man, so that he can help us. Closed mouths don't get fed. If we don't bring the attention to detail, or we don't bring our situation uh-huh. to people who can help us, we'll never be helped, right? right? If we don't bring it to God, man, we just use it having God on standby who's waiting for us to fall, man. And right. he doesn't want us to fall, but he's patient enough to watch us fall so that we can come running back to him like, Literally. hey, man, I told you so. Literally. I, I told you so. So we have to be open because the problem is, I love what you said, man. We start to become blind to the bad habits. A bad habit turns into just a regular habit after so many times that you do it over and over again consistently. Like, you talked about going through the yellow lights. The more that you go through the yellow lights, the more you start thinking that they green lights, man. Like, oh, man, they <laughs> oh, yellow yeah. lights. Man, I got to be open right now, bro. Yeah. Like, I started to time the lights, bro, because now they start to be yellow, right? Yeah. Now I'm like, oh, man, it's still a green light. I still got out three seconds to go through this thing when I should be starting, bro. I should Thanks. be coming to a halt. But now my mind has adjusted, has adapted to that bad habit to mm. the point where now it's like, this is this is not this is this is normal. This is fine. Mm. When it originally it was blinking in my face, yo, you gotta stop, bro. Yo, you gotta slow down. Now I'm like speeding through. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Like nah, bro. Right. Halt, bro. You gotta stop, bro. bro. Halt. <laughs> you gotta stop, bro. And you, because at the end of the day, man, what happens is we go through the lights. We, those things become normal. We get T-boned, right? Mm-hmm. But the T-bone doesn't just affect us. Somebody else gets injured in that T-bone accident as well, bro. Mm-hmm. So these bad habits carry on and affect us and other people, man. Cut it out at the stem, man. Yeah, that's huge. And something that I learned, like, while I was trying to pluck away bad habits in my life was first understanding, like, who God is, but also understanding that God is a gentleman. He's not going to come into any room that I don't want him to come into. If he's standing at the door just knocking, but if I'm not sitting there opening the door, then he's going to sit there and wait, you know? So if I want to pluck up these big, these bad habits, I have to open the door for him and actually allow him to come in and do his work, not sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to deal with it and just not say anything. You know, maybe people will just see what's going on, but it's like, no, like, 
just like open the door for God, like, you know, ask, seek and knock, you know, maybe God is knocking on your life right now. Maybe he's knocking on all of our lives right now. We're just not opening the door. So if you want to pluck these bad habits, like I recommend, like opening the door for God, like let, give him the just give him the platform to just move in your life. Like and it starts with prayer, too. It's just like, you know, prayer is, is right there for us. That's instant communication with God, too. So a point I want to hit on because you just brought God into it. You call God being a gentleman. That that's go. That's that's a five dollar statement door. right there, man. I was talking about Josh in his relationship with God. And God's probably like, "Greeting, Sir Joshua. <laughs> How are morning. you today?" Stop the morning too. But I want to think about like the the Samaritan woman at the well, man, or uh, yeah, who had all the husbands, right? Mm -hmm. And the key thing about that story is that you know Jesus saw where she was. Jesus saw exactly yeah. where she was in that story and and all of the adulterous activities that she had been involved in, right? But the first thing that happens is that you get all these Pharisees and teachers of the law that were trying to c condemn her, right? Mm -hmm. what, is he, what does Jesus say? You are without sin. Be the first to throw a stone at her. Nobody could throw a stone at her because they all they were all sinners, bro. Oh, and so I would say to people that have that happens right now, don't let the fear of judgment prevent you from presenting things to God because God is not going to condemn you. God actually wants you to present the things to him so he can love and support you, comfort you, and also help you grow past mm -hmm. that situation, man. He says, be the first to throw us on earth if you have never committed a sin. They've all committed sins. When we are all sinners, we all struggle, we all have bad habits. Don't let the fear of judgment prevent you from presenting things to God. Oh my gosh, that's so good too because and even like presenting it to God, but also presenting it to people too, because yeah. uh, it also talks about in First Corinthians 12, how we're one body. We're all, we're one body, but we're different members. But at the same time, we may all struggle with the same things, but if we're not talking to each other about it, how are we gonna know? How are we gonna be able to help each other? And so me and you, we met, our, we met at a low point in our life, but we were able to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and help each other out and continue to grow with, with God being the foundation. So it's like, man, we all go through the same stuff. So don't be afraid of judgment, of you know people looking down on you, but whole time they might be struggling through the same thing or if not worse. So it's kind of like be vulnerable with them not only not that's kind of like when we hold it in as being selfish yeah it's yeah. prideful that, exactly it's prideful mm -hmm. because we don't know what they're going through as well because if they're going through the same thing and i'm withholding my information then they're not going to get help either it's just two people that's just hurting and just walking around so it's like we got to help each other out man i i just wanted to um say to the you know, them people you know is um some that has shocked me in the past two years is the fact that so many people are around me have the same problems as me i didn't know until i opened up and i was like oh you've got that problem too you've got that bad habit too i got my time thing for the for the media stuff because i was talking to him i'm like man i'm kind of on the most media too much it's causing these these, these problems like oh same here i was like bro what and so we each put a time on the other person's phone and it's like bro i didn't i didn't know that this guy had that same um, problem until i opened up you know what I'm saying? i opened the uh the uh door and let that in um, the the, uh, the thought process, the uh, uh, the analogy I was kind of processing here is um is a housekeeper. You know what I'm saying? They they they, they, they be coming in and they get the room all clean and all that, but they can't get in unless that door is open. You have to invite them in so that they can come get that room all clean, perfect, the pills and all this and all that. And my final point up on you is um is is how you get. T-boned, it hurts you, it hurts the people up in the back, it hurts your car, you gotta pay the insurance thing. It's like all these problems came because you never fixed the the, you know, the problem and never got cut as root. But it was cut as root, the problem is fixed, and all these things don't get affected. But your habit affects so many other things, bro. And that's why I just wanna help them help people see is that one habit affects four, five, six different things. I think the cool thing is that is like communication helps other people realize that people are humans as well. Mm -hmm. When we communicate to other people, man, it helps us get out of that picture. Like, oh man, like that person's not perfect. In yeah. fact, that person struggles with the same struggles that I have. Maybe we can grow together. Maybe I'm not alone in the situation that I'm dealing with, right? And so I thought of the, the analogy of the body to your point. Like, what does the body do when a body has an injury somewhere on the body? Like oh, the rest of the body parts unite together to help exert energy to help that other limp part of the body stay strong or help yeah. that grow forward right so the body together as believers man when one part when one thing is down when one part of the body is down we all have to unite together to help that thing push forward 
to help that thing grow, to help that thing stand firm. Because at the end of the day, if the body's not communicating, man, if I got a broken ankle, man, then I'm just gonna be walking, I'm gonna fall every single time. I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna fall every single time because I'm not communicating, or my hands not communicating, my eyes not yeah. communicating, or my brain's not communicating to the rest of my body. Like, hey, yo, we got an injury, bro. We got to deal with this issue now, right? So that the rest of this stuff doesn't begin to injure itself, right? And my other ankle doesn't start to overcompensate because of putting too much weight on one ankle, man. So we have to communicate so that it helps others, so that we can all unite together and fix the problem at hand. Mm -hmm. Hey, facts, man. Facts. That broken ankle ain't telling the rest of the body, man. It's a wrap. My it's a man broken ain't ankle. raised no fool. Man. My man ain't raised no fool, it's man. It's a done deal. Got to communicate. Listen, at the end of the day, man, you gotta identify good habits, identify your bad habits, acknowledge them, bring them to other people, man. And then also, like, I wanted to say, like, man, we gotta start, man. It's, it takes 21 days to develop habits. Facts. If you want good habits in your life, start now, man, and make be consistent with those habits, right? It takes 21 days to form a, a good habit in your mind and then for the rest of that to trickle down to your life. Start now with those good habits. Get around good people that can help you grow, that can hold you accountable. Be open, right? Commit to 21 days of, of sharing struggles with people and not all become a habitual lifestyle in your life, man. Mm -hmm. So start, man. Start, be consistent, be disciplined, and present everything to God. Yeah, right? Yeah, we got that was smooth. Yeah, thanks. Sheesh. Peace. Dang, God, what came through? We out to Peace. Peace. Deuce.